Some of them say, you know what, this is too hard. I'm going to go back to a job, right? But they don't realize that's that's harder to go back to a job and you know put in all that time and then just hopefully you have enough money to to retire on by the time you're you're ready to quote unquote retire from that job. It's you got to choose your heart, you know. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Real Estate Investors Club podcast. I'm here with Chris Logan, who um, is a wholesaler from the U.S. We just discovered that, uh, or I just discovered that he's a little bit outside of Tampa. So much nicer weather right now here in January in Montreal. It's about minus seven degrees Celsius outside. So we got some snow on the ground. I'm uh, <laughs> a bit jealous of people who are down south. Um, Chris, welcome to the show. Why don't you uh, give us a quick elevator pitch on who you are and what led you to be on the show today? Yeah, Terry, thanks so much for having me on. Uh, really excited to be connecting with you here and uh, sharing value with your audience. Um, yeah, no. So I started my real estate journey uh, 10 years ago. Uh, my wife and I started the business together, only we weren't husband and wife back then. We were boyfriend and girlfriend. And we went to this real estate event because I didn't want to go by myself. And they threw up all these different strategies up on the wall as far as what you could do. And they talked about wholesaling, fix and flipping, everything. And the strategy that really set, that really attracted me on us was wholesaling, right? And so that's something that we, uh, we're very interested in. Then we hired a uh, coach and a mentor, got started in it. And uh, it took us six months to do our first deal. And then fast forward, uh, 10 years later, we've um, freed ourselves from corporate America. We've done over 600 deals and scaled our business to over seven figures. And so it's been one heck of a journey, but we've learned a lot on there. And uh, I'm excited to share some of the things that could probably help out some newbies or beginners starting out um, that are in your audience. Awesome. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on the wholesaling business model because, you know, us being yeah. up in Canada, it's not a super popular, super common business model up here. Sure. But I do want to hear about the journey that you've taken and, you know, kind of where you started and where you've end up, ended up. So you, you gave me the condensed version. Like maybe you can just take me through what that looked like on a personal growth level, because, you know, yeah. you took me through the quick business um, experience, but I think, you know, what I realized and, and, you know, what our, our off camera chat before, you know, you mentioned, you think that 90% of real estate is mental and 10% is knowledge. Um, I definitely mm -hmm. agree with that. That's actually a quote from, uh, from combat sports, by the way, 90% oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> of fighting is mental. 10% is, uh, uh, is training. I'm just going to say I invented yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so why don't you tell me about that 90%? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sure. laughs> well, maybe you imported it into real estate. So, so tell me like, <laughs> what has that journey been like? Yeah. So, you know, there's so much that goes into the mental state when you're first getting into real estate, right? Because a lot of times um, when people first get started, there's a lot of self-limiting beliefs that they have from when they were growing up. Maybe it's from their parents. Maybe it's from friends, people telling you, you can't do this. You can't do that. You know, the only way that you, you know, you can be successful is to go work a job nine to five, you know, and then retire when you're 60. Right. And then that's your, that's your life. That's what you're supposed to have. And anytime you step outside of that framework, right. Or the matrix, right. Of what everybody believes is what it is. You get pushback. You know, people tell you, oh, are you crazy? Do you see the real estate market right now? It's a terrible time to get in real estate. Oh, no, I know somebody that lost money in real estate. What are you doing, right? And you get all of these opinions from people that you don't ask for ever, but they just, they find their way to you, right? And, you know, it's it's being able to, in the beginning, just understand that these people, most of them friends or family, they want what's best for you, right? They really do. Um, I truly believe that. But at the end of the day, their opinions are misguided. And a lot of times what people do is they take their own limitations, right? So if they tried real estate and they weren't able to do it, they then take that and they project that onto you. And they say, because they couldn't do it, you're not going to do it or you're going to struggle with it too. So already, instead of entering into real estate saying, I'm really excited about this, I'm going to crush it, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do big things and start it instead, instead of getting excited about your future, you're kind of thinking about what if I fail? right? Like what if, 
what if my mom's right? What if my uncle's right? My dad's right? Whatever. What if, what if it turns out bad? And so you already have that, that cap that gets placed on your, on your, uh, on your success on your potential success in the beginning, because you already have that limiting belief, right? So the challenge that I see with a lot of new people getting started is pushing all that aside and saying, you know what? That's fantastic. You have that opinion, but that's all it is. And it has nothing to do with me. I'm going to be 100% focused. I'm going to dive into this and I will be successful regardless come heck or high water, right? And it's that attitude saying that I'm going to be successful regardless of what happens. Whatever obstacles I face, I don't care. I'm going to be successful, right? And those are the people that I've seen have the most success. When I was leaving uh, my corporate job or wanted to leave my corporate job, I remember talking to my wife uh, every day on the way home saying, Heather, I really want to, I really want to leave this job. I, I want to do real estate full time. I just feel like we're meant to do it. And that's that. It's going to happen. And every day I would talk to her. She probably got really tired of hearing me talk about that. <laughs> but, but, you know, I talked to her about it every day and I was super passionate about it. But whenever I'd reach an obstacle, I would, I would take it as a learning experience and I would say, okay, what did I do wrong here? And how can I fix it for next time? A lot of people, they get started, they reach an obstacle, they get punched in the gut and they're like, oh, maybe this isn't meant for me. And then they fall back on those beliefs that I talked about before. So I really feel for people to be successful in this, they have to focus on the long, the long game, right? You may have anything worth doing is worth doing. And you may run into some uh, obstacles in the beginning, right? You may fall on your face several times, but you know what? That's part of the journey. And if you can acknowledge that from the beginning and just say, Hey, this is part of the journey, par for the course, right? Then your chances of success go up dramatically because that's where most people fail. And most people give up. Did you know the real estate investors club podcast is starting a mastermind? Imagine having the power and the knowledge that's shared in these podcasts in a group setting. You get to have accountability, build a peer group, and also develop a network that's going to help support your real estate goals. Please check out more information at terryshower.com and select the mastermind tab on the drop down menu on the left. You know, I 100% agree with you. And um, I think that a lot of, you know, maybe the previous generation of real estate coaching, um, real estate content that's out there, um, tried to make things seem a little bit too easy. And, you know, I think that like people, you know, maybe make promises or, or various organizations made promises like that because they're trying to sell very expensive coaching programs. And, you know, then you have to wonder how aligned, um, are some of those materials with actually like, are they trying to sell coaching or are they actually trying to support people through this journey? Because they're not necessarily the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. and I feel like, you know, us as people who either have coaching businesses or who take up a lot of, uh, airtime in the real estate industry, like it's really up to us to pull back the curtain on that and be honest with people about the fact that like, this is a, it's a difficult journey, but everything's a difficult journey. Whatever you want to become good at in life, whatever you want to do, do you think it's not, it's not difficult to go, go to college, graduate, have a job, you know, save for retirement and then make sure that you're continuously employed and growing for your entire professional life. Like that's extremely difficult. It's extremely difficult yeah. to be good in real estate. Right. And so like, no matter, there's no free ride and it's not like, you know, the reason to get out of your nine to five job is, uh, that it's going to be easier somewhere else. It just might be that you get to keep the profits from that. And that ultimately, you know, some people are cut out to be their own boss and maybe other people are not, but like, don't lie yeah. to yourself and think it's going to be less difficult. It's also going to be difficult. It's just going to be different, difficult. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And a big problem that people have is tapping in, kind of piggybacking on what you were saying there. A big problem that people have that I've seen is they will hop to different real estate strategies. So they'll start with one, right? And then they'll be like, oh man, they'll hit an obstacle, right? And they're like, oh, that's, this is too hard, right? And then they hop to the next strategy and buy the next course. And then they hop to the next strategy and buy the next course. And then at the end of the thing, they realize that none of these strategies are either easier than the other one, right? It's just that they didn't put in the time past the point of difficulty to get any momentum that they needed to have, right? And because they didn't do that, now they've been through like five different courses, five different coaches, they're burnt out. 
and they're wondering really if real estate is for them. So, you know, focusing on, okay, I'm going to focus on one thing, one strategy, whatever that is, I'm going to do it, move forward and come heck or high water, I'm going to be successful, right? And that's what it takes because a lot of those people that go through those different strategies, like I talked about, some of them say, you know what, this is too hard. I'm going to go back to a job, right? But they don't realize that's that's harder to go back to a job and you know put in all that time and then just hopefully you have enough money to to retire on by the time you're you're ready to quote unquote retire from that job. It's you got to choose your heart, you know. Mm -mm. So I want to just like pick at that a little bit because I think you know there's an aspect of what you're saying that's right. I think there's the risk of dabbling, right? And I think that you know when people are uh, you know existentially questioning what they're doing and they're somehow feeling unfulfilled in their job or unfulfilled filled in any aspect of, of, of their life, they'll then begin to dabble, you know? And mm -hmm. then you, you, obviously if you're in dabbling mode, the minute you encounter an obstacle, like that's immediately, oh, I thought this was going to be easy. Let me pull the plug on it. But to yep, play devil's exactly. advocate, um, mm -hmm. you know, different aspects of the real estate industry require, or maybe um, are best for people with certain kinds of character. And I'll give you an example. So when I started being full-time in real estate, I went out, I got my broker's license. I started managing properties and I started investing and 20 years on, I still have an active broker's license, but I do very little buying and selling because as far as my personal strengths go, I'm not like my character is not the perfect character to be a broker. It's not that I mm. didn't, you know, meet adversity and put in the effort to overcome adversity. It's just that I'm a better manager and a better multifamily investor than I am a broker, let's say. And so, you know, how do you think how can people know the difference? Like, how do you know when maybe this is just not the right place for me in the industry, or maybe this is just not the right role, you know, and, and I'm going to go one step further because this is, I think another common thing that, you know, people encounter when they're taking coaching from real estate people, like in our world, a J-O-B is a bad word. Right. And, you know, if I take a lot of my clients, I think for them, they're actually very happy in their job. And yes, they would investors part-time to like deal with their, um, you know, retirement, but they're never going to be full-time real estate people. And, you know, like I'm thinking of one particular guy who like works at, you know, at Microsoft as like a project manager. He's a really great job there, loves his job, loves the stuff he's in data security, loves the stuff that he gets to see there in that realm. And for me to tell him, you need to quit your J-O-B and go full-time into real estate. It's just not the right answer for him. No, but it's not yeah. though. Like, yes, should he own a few properties mm -hmm. to cover him for retirement? Yes, but he's exactly where he needs to be. So I think one has to be careful with like, you know, these kind of blanket statements that like, oh, you know, everybody should be in real estate and everybody should be doing X, Y, and Z. Like, no, I think it's being full-time is for some people. Should everyone own a mm -hmm. property or two for their retirement? Yeah, that, yes, probably, you know? So I don't know what, what, what's your reaction to that? I love everything that you just said there. So let's, let's, cause this is a great conversation. So I'd like to dive into that. So, um, so how do you know? So your question there is how do you know when you've, when you're at that point, whether how to say, you know, to stick or move like this is for me, or if it's not for me, or if I'm meant for this, I'm not meant for it. Right. So here's the thing. It all comes down to the reason why you started right? So a lot of people start for the wrong reason. Some people start just because of the money and that's it. And so when they reach obstacles and they don't make the money they want to make in the beginning or as quickly as they think, that's when they give up because they're like, oh, it's just, you know, it's not what I want to do. So I'm going to try this other way of making money in real estate because this looks easier, right? Oh no, this one doesn't work. And, and so, so the mentality is different there. The mentality is I want to try this because it seems easy and I can make money. And then they don't make the money and they switch. And so that's where it can be a negative thing. But what you're talking about more so is you did it, right? You tried it and you said, you know what? I could be successful with this if I wanted to, but it's just not my personality. And I don't, I don't like it. I don't enjoy it, right? And life is meant to be enjoyed and you have to enjoy what you're doing, right? And so if that's what makes you happy, then that's fine. But it's not like, you picked five different things here because you thought there was opportunity to make money and then you stopped doing all those things and you're like, okay. And, and, and you just said, it's not, not for me at all. You just kind of pivoted into something that was more in line with your personality, right? And as far as like uh, people with jobs, I'm all about one thing. 
my biggest thing is doing what you love and what makes you happy. And if you love working for someone else and that makes you happy, then my thing is make sure you're financially secure. What does that mean? That means make sure you have some other type of income coming in outside of that job, just in case something happens with that job where that job is no longer there. You're not putting yourself in a bad financial place or you're not putting your family in a rough financial place. So for me, all about being financially secure. I know several very successful people that have amazing jobs, right? They make fantastic money and they invest in like uh, multifamily syndications, right? In, in properties. And they are happy as a clam, right? So at the end of the day, if that's what makes them happy, then good, right? Uh, it's not like you have to be in real estate full time to be considered successful, right? Um, it really comes down to what makes you happy and doing what you love and what you're good at. And I wholeheartedly don't believe you should stick into something like you should stay doing something just because of what everybody else thinks, or that's what the crowd's version of success. You got to carve your own path. You got to do what you do. And, and you did exactly that with that. So no, that's hundred percent spot on. Yeah, no. And, and I think, you know, like you, you bring up a good point when you're, you know, mentioning people's relationship to money. And I think that, you know, real estate for better or for worse, it's an industry where there is a lot of money. You know, if you're in mm -hmm. it as a as a real estate broker, a mortgage broker, if you're an operator, if you're somebody who's flipping, like whatever strategy you use, there's a lot of be a lot of money to be made in the industry. Mm -hmm. And so 100%. the people who get attracted are, you know, and I see this with brokers all the time. It's like there's some brokers who love the money and there's some brokers who love the job. And, mm. you know, ultimately, if if I think, you know, I, I wrote a book called Mindful Landlord. So I'm obviously more on the, you know, you need to be personally aligned with what you do. I feel like you're also kind of there as well. Have you really been listening to the episode or has your monkey mind been taking you off in one direction or another? Our mental habits can be our biggest assets or our biggest liabilities as we pursue certain goals. For me, the biggest performance gains have always come from training my mind. In my book, Mindful Landlord, I talk about how you can train your mind and how can you can apply some of these strategies to your journey in the real estate field. The book is available on Amazon and also on its website, mindfullandlord.com. Now I'll stop evangelizing for the power of mental training and let you get back to the show. Um, so yeah, it's important to get financial returns from what you do to, to work out that security aspect, you know, get perhaps more financial freedom than you can have if your sole income source is a job. Mm -hmm. Um, but ultimately in terms of your professional life, like having a profession is having a profession. It's not just making money yep. and there is satisfaction to be had. There is meaning to be had in your professional development, wherever you're supposed to to be doing that. And perhaps the correct vehicle for you is a, is a job, you know, not to, not to turn it into a dirty word, or perhaps that is getting really good at something in real estate, but you know, ultimately the more you're able to develop professionally, the more you're going to have a meaningful existence. And, you know, I'm always a little bit, um, how can I say careful with happiness? Because I think happiness is something that shows up when all the other conditions in your life that you control align. You don't control whether or not you're happy. Tragedy can strike at any moment. You do control whether or not what you're doing is meaningful and whether it's mm. something that is likely to lead to a sense of fulfillment and then happiness ensues at some periods along that journey, right? So definitely if you're thinking mm -hmm. about meaning, like what is the meaning of money? What is the meaning of financial security? And then what is the meaning of your professional life? And that would be the metric that I would use aside from, let's say, necessarily happiness. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who are not happy. Like, for example, like, right, like they're, they're doing things for the wrong reasons. Like they're, they're working a job because they were told that that's what to do, but they hate their job, right? But they won't leave. And then they won't take a risk to step outside of their comfort zone. So for those types of people, I feel like a, a massive shift needs to happen somewhere because you, you never really are stuck, right? Just people believe that they're stuck, right? There may be periods of time where transition can be hard, but you're never really stuck. You can always do something different. And being happy is a is a choice, right? Like you have to, you have to pursue what you want to do every single day to make sure that you're living, like you said, a meaningful existence where you're happy with what you're doing, you're satisfied with it, and you can say at the end of the day, hey, I I, I did great today, right? 
And so um, the problem, though, is a lot of people who get into real estate for the wrong reasons, maybe they do it because of everything we talked about, right? Maybe they feel like that's what you have to do to be successful, but they're miserable every single day. So like, do something different. <laughs> you wanna, if, if that's not what you enjoy doing, don't do it. And you should never do anything just because people tell you that you you should do it, right? It's all about searching for meaning and making sure that every day you're living life, you're living your life and not anybody else's. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, going back to uh, me wishing that there was a little bit more, you know, maybe vulnerability or or whatever it is, or, or transparency from people who have succeeded um, in our industry is like being open about how difficult change is. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody wakes up one morning and says, oh, today I'm going to change the way I do things for fun. And if yeah. you do say that, it's going to mm -hmm. be over by lunchtime or else you're going to be engaged in some kind of, you know, major grappling match with reality as you try to change all of the habits and the reactions that you have. Like change is really mm -hmm. difficult. And if it is that, you know, we're afraid of going against common wisdom, which is, I think, something you alluded to, or if it's just that fight, that minute to minute fight to not follow, fall into the comfort zone and our habitual reactions, like that's just about the most difficult thing a human being can do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so like no, managing change yeah, and, like, and being sure people, you stay on track through it, right? A hundred percent. And and I think that where people fail uh, when it comes to change is they try to change too much too fast. And like you said, if they change too much too fast, then by lunchtime they're they're gonna they're gonna want to give up, right? But you know, for example, like you know, you can't say, okay, um, I haven't done any marketing for sellers at all, right? And but tomorrow I'm gonna make 500 phone calls or I'm gonna walk this five 500 houses. It just it doesn't it doesn't work like that. There's a really good book by Darren Hardy called The Compound Effect, and he talks about how you know you have to ease into things, right? Maybe example if if you're preparing to run a 5K, right? You're preparing for this big run or this competition, right? And but you're you're out of shape and you haven't worked out in a long time. Start by walking around your neighborhood, right, or half the neighborhood. And then gradually build that up to where you do it more and then gradually more and then gradually more and gradually more before you know it, you're, you're walking the amount of time that you need or running the time you need to prepare for whatever it is that you're preparing for. But it's all about taking steps. So baby steps to get there, right? It doesn't all have to be massive, right? You don't have to do something, this huge change right away. You can take baby steps to that and gradually build up your tolerance for that change so you feel confident and comfortable about it. And then each day you can take a new step with confidence. And as long as you're making small improvements every single day, that's what matters most. People don't give enough uh, credit to small change, small amounts of change on a very consistent basis, right? Like my main thing is I just want to be better than I was yesterday. Could be by 1%. It doesn't matter. And if I did that, then I can say I had a successful day and I'm happy right? But small steps every single day can lead up to really big results. And that's one of the reasons I love that book. And it should be a great book that, uh, you know, all entrepreneurs read. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. It's actually like one of my, one of my favorite go-to books. And, um, yeah. you know, I love the incremental notion of stacking small successes on top of each other and not being aware necessarily of how those things add up over time. And like, you mm -hmm. know, if you're somebody who doesn't love to prospect, I, you know, don't, I didn't love that. That was a part of my career that I really didn't enjoy was when I was kind of priming the pump at the beginning. And I had to do like a lot of sort of cold, cold sales type of situations. But if yeah. you force yourself to do five of those every single day, that's going to stack up to a level where eventually it's going to show results. And, you know, I always like, Absolutely. like the, with the, the diet metaphors, but like if you eat just a hundred calories less every single day, or if on the flip side, you eat a hundred calories more than you should every single day, look where you mm. are six months from now. And oh, it's amazing. Yeah. The, that transition will be gradual you know, but it will be there. And so if you're looking at, you know, having positive habits, having like positive habit goals, let's say they don't have to be huge goals. It can be small things that incrementally mm -hmm. stack up over time. And, and I think you're right that like, you know, people have a tendency when they, they want to change, they want to tackle everything all at once. And I think definitely focusing on incremental gains 
And then also systems. And, you know, I'm like, a, I'm a big, I love, I'm a big fan of systems. And I think if you with your own willpower are slowly going to try to, you know, change something about yourself, it's virtually impossible. And mm, for whatever yeah. domain in life you want to level up or you want to do something, there are systems, there's coaching, there's apps for everything. Now, if you want to, you know, really do something and actually affect change, you got to get on some kind of system, get yourself some kind of help, whatever it is, podcasts, books, apps, there are just so many resources, whatever the domain is and whatever works for you, find it. But you need a system because it's not just by getting up in the morning and being like, I'm going to eat better today. Like, what does that even mean? Like you have to quantify, get real specific and then get a system for tracking what you're doing. Because otherwise, like it's just kind of a free for all, you know? Yeah, 100 percent. And that that's that's huge. Like people are not very clear with what their goals are. They say, I want to be successful. Right. I want to be a successful real estate investor. OK, well, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? Like, what is it going to look like when you get there? Right. How do you quantify that? How do you, what steps can you take to get there? Right. So the more clear that you are and the more clear your vision is, right. The easier it is going to be to reach it. And it's, and it's going to change from being something that's far off in dreamland. That would be the ideal scenario if you could only make it happen. And it's going to transform that into an actual possibility that you can get there, you know? So, uh, there's another really good book called, um, the one thing by Gary Keller. He's the founder of uh, Keller Williams. And so um, something that's <clears throat> super important for people in the beginning, um, clarity is, is again, number one, that's massive, right? Focus is, is huge, right? Focusing on one thing until success. And I love that book because uh, it's, it, it, it shows you how focusing on five different things is not going to get you to where you want to be. You want to be a successful real estate investor. Okay, so you're going to do this, 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 and this, right? No, you, you say, okay, I want to be a successful real estate investor that owns or that does blah. And then that's what you focus on. So that book really teaches you how to, how to control your focus and do one thing until success. And there's a great question in there that says, um, if I could do, if I took everything else off the table today, right? And I could do one thing that would take care of everything else, what would that be, right? So if you have five things you have to get done for the day or 10 things and you can, can't can get to all the 10 of those things, right? Think of the one big thing that if you did that, that would take care of all the others and that's what you focus on. So it's hyper-focused on that and, uh, and just making sure that you're walking in a straight line on your journey and you're not going off all these tangents because you'll never get to where you want to be, right? So um, those two books, The Compound Effect, man, and... and uh, and the one thing or two of the most impactful books that I've that I've read and I've, I recommend them to all my coaching clients too. Yeah, absolutely big fan of the one thing. I think the question is uh what's the one thing that if you did it would make everything else easier. And there you uh, go. I I read that book and then I was like exactly I was walking around and like you know boom boom like in every aspect of my life I'm like oh, what's the one thing that would make everything else easier. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, absolutely. But, uh, it really no, makes I think that's you really think how you do things effect. because our natural yeah. tendency is to say, okay, we have this huge goal that we want, right? And we know we got to do all these things to get there, right? So we're just going to knock the majority of those out uh, by noon today. <laughs> you know, and I, that's at least how my yeah. personality was before I read it. And, but now I, I take a step back and I'm like, okay, I'm going to think a little bit more about instead of just throwing myself into work and throwing myself into massive amounts of activity for the day. I'm actually going to take a minute out and I'm going to think about the answer to this question. I'm going to write it down and then ask myself, what steps can I take today to knock that out? Yeah. I, so I want to, you know, thank you. It's been like a really fun conversation. I think it was like very much back and forth because obviously we, uh, uh, I think we agree on a lot of stuff. It's always fun to shoot ideas back and forth. Um, but we're coming to the end of our interview. Is there something I've missed? Is there a last piece of wisdom you want to share with the audience before we log off? Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, guys, what I'd like you to do is if you're considering getting into real estate, just make the decision, move forward and dive in head first. That's the only way that it's going to happen. Change can be uncomfortable, but you got to take the first step. Get outside your comfort zone. It's going to feel weird. It's going to feel uncomfortable, right? But that's always what happens when you're on the path to do something great. So take action, massive, imperfect, immediate action. Stop preparing Stop putting together the checklist. Just take action, make that first step. And 
you'll be on the path to a great, a, a very bright future. And by the way, if you want to uh, follow me, you can find me on Facebook. My uh, handle is clogan777. On Instagram, it's Chris Logan REI. And I look forward to connecting to you guys in the future. Thank you, Chris. That was going to be my next question was how people should get in touch with you. So guys, you can also check out the show notes for this episode. Uh, we're going to leave all Chris's details in there. We're also going to drop in those two book recs because those are two of my personal favorites. Chris, thank you again for taking this time to chat with my audience, share some value with them. And real estate fans, if you found this episode to be useful, if there was anything in here you connected with, please go ahead and share it with a friend who you think could benefit. And log in next week for more of the Real Estate Investors Club podcast. Thank you.